It's a few months after the events of Endgame, yeah. and I think everyone is still kind of in that denial phase of, yeah. the, of yeah. the, the implication and the ramifications of what's happened. Um, because if you really did disappear and come back for five years, that's not something you get over in five months. Yeah. Yeah. And that's also not something you come to term with in five months. So yeah. I think at this stage, our heroes and our cast are still very much kind of a little bit taken aback by what's mm -hmm. going on, and Peter Parker especially. Being able to tra travel the world, I yeah. think, is really cool, <laughs> <Yeah>. you know? <laughs> uh, other than the fact that we, we've never really seen Spider-Man <coughs> be able to do his thing, I think, in anywhere else really than mm -hmm. New York, yeah. so it's really cool to kind of see that somewhere else. Yeah. Um, but also, just like selfishly, us just being able to like have a good time in all yeah, these yeah. amazing, beautiful places and like shooting at these gorgeous landmarks and like, yeah. it's yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty wild. John Watts is a is a director of representation. You know, if you look at our cast, it's an incredibly diverse cast, and he's representing a whole uh, load of uh, of people. And by going to these different places, we're representing different countries. We're representing Italy and Czech Republic and, and England, which for me, being able to represent my own city is, is a real honor. Oh my yeah. goodness, way, yes. Way Definitely. It's like it leveled up in a... In like sure. I think senses. there's like twice as many action sequences. Uh -huh. It's in, it's and there's never a dull moment, is there? No, there's, no, always there's never a moment like watching when you're like, oh, this could be a bit shorter. Mm -hmm. But it's amazing. I think what's what's special about I think this time around is the first time around we didn't really get to see much of her, um, but she kind of has a defense mechanism. And I think that that kind of hard shell that she has and her defense mechanism is really just to be sarcastic. And sometimes it comes off mean, but she's just. She's just very like blatantly honest, which I think is actually a really wonderful quality because nobody's ever truly honest nowadays. Um, so you know, I, I don't know. I think it's 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 kind of refreshing to have people like that. But I also think that sometimes, um, you know, you don't really know people why people put those walls up. And I think it's nice as this you know movie continues that through their like her romance and awkward romance with Peter, um, I think she kind of has to strip away her wall a little bit and be a little bit more open and you kind of see her, um, I don't know, she gets gooey and you kind of get to see that she is really just like this kind of fragile, um, still very young, young, young woman. And so it's, I don't know, it's just nice to see different sides of her mm. um, while also kind of still staying true to the character that we've created. I think he's really like <laughs> jealous, but yeah. like in a really funny way because uh, he like he really I think what made him feel special was that he was the only one that knew. <laughs> yeah, and like it, he kind of thinks it was something that's been taken away from him. But I'm pretty sure he doesn't hate MJ. I mean, like they all love each other, so I don't think there's any way that he'd like. Yeah, it seems like when you guys were on the bus and you do yeah. the FOS thing, yeah, you're like. You guys, had a have, moment. you guys yeah. have become a team. Yeah, yeah it you wasn't know? like he accepted it. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't like no, like I don't want you a part of this. So if you had yeah. to bring in one more cast member to the FOS group, <laughs> who would it be? I don't know, man. I feel like the obvious mm -hmm. answer would be like Tony. I think Zach would be. A but good Zach would be like sure. Zach would probably kill the game. You know, yeah, Zach, Zach would, would be really good to do. <sighs> to bring in. Yeah, so not Tony, yeah. but Zach. He wants to try and escape the responsibility of being Spider-Man, but unfortunately, the responsibility of being the friendly neighborhood superhero is not one you can run away from. So in this film, you'll see him learn and grow and realize that he has to step up, and this responsibility is bigger than just his, his vacation. <laughs> so he grows up a lot in this film and uh, takes on the mantle of, of an Avenger for the first time, really. Well, I love the first film, and I love the tone of the first film, and I thought that John Watts had made a great film inside such a huge world, inside of a world that had been done so often and people had become familiar with. It was art, like a completely new take. I love that so many of the characters were so relatable, and they all were full of complexity, which is very hard in a film like, like this. Um, and when he came to me and said, he introduced this idea of Mysterio, I thought, um, well, isn't he a bad guy, playing a villain and this and that? And he said, no. And I thought, oh, that's an interesting take. And I just loved his take on Mysterio and his relationship with Peter Parker and Spider-Man, that they actually, they team up together and that they're friends and um, that they share a similar history 
and that's how they get so close so quickly. And I, I was really in in, in that in that uh, that journey. It was exciting. I I. I didn't realize how intimidating the journey would be or how big this this movie was going to be until I came on set the first day. And I think that there's a, um, a way in which a very fun improvisational style that a lot of these movies are made with that I started to have to get familiar with um, over time. And I, I love improvisation, I love that, but I was still trying to work out the character in the midst of it. So yeah, I was intimidated by it and I was also excited by it, but I was also surrounded by a group of people who were very loving and inclusive and allowed me to sort of slowly warm up into the, into the process. To play Spider-Man is uh, a lot, I would think, for someone, um, because you are holding a myth within something at the same time trying to make something your, your own, uniquely. And Tom is a deeply physical actor and his instincts come really from the ground up, from literally his feet up. And I am amazed by that. I love watching every actor I work with work. And um, I'm fascinated by different people's techniques and their styles and what they do. And he was a complete original. And I adore him. In truth, when I first put it on, I was like, this feels, is this right? You know, it felt kind of great, but it was also like, is, th how, is this cool? Like, and then I realized, particularly because the Mysterio costume is full with a lot of, you know, there's a fishbowl helmet and there's a history of the costume being this way or that way. I think a lot of people were really waiting to see what it would look like, but it is so beautifully crafted and so meticulously done. Um, it's a really work of art and it was incredible to wear that on my body. I, it, it gave me more than half of my character and a tremendous confidence in this scene in this world and all of a sudden everything made sense when I, when I put it on. Well, the elemental creatures, um, I follow one of the elemental creatures through uh, the, a rift in a space continuum and find myself on another Earth uh, trying to fight this creature. And what I don't know is that they sort of are expanding into different areas all over this earth as they did on my earth. And I lost a lot on my earth and um, sacrificed a lot fighting this one that led me to this earth. And um, find Nick Fury um, in the midst of battling this creature. And then we join up knowing that he's we have a somewhat similar group of people on my earth, but different in a lot of different ways. There are variations on things in this earth. And I, uh, I join up and I meet Spider-Man and we have to fight these creatures as they appear and reappear. I mean, this is, this world he knows so well. And in a lot of ways he created this world as a character. And then I think also he's been in so many of these movies that it's, it's second nature to Sam. I, I've actually known him for many years, so it was really wonderful to be able to sit with him in a scene and work with him just a bit. And um, he's wonderful. He's, he's just a pro, you know? And at ease and coming up with ideas and things and improvising in a way that I was in awe of. And he's, yeah, he's, he's wonderful. For me, it's always about taking him out of his comfort zone and trying to show audiences something that they haven't seen before, you know? And we've seen a lot of Spider-Man swinging around uh, New York City, so to get him out, not just of New York City, but to get him out of the United States and take him on this crazy European tour just felt like it would be, um, be something fun to watch. This movie is about Spider-Man going from being a friendly, neighborhood hero and suddenly being forced out onto the world stage. So to have him be, uh, be in Europe mirrored that in, in a way that I thought was interesting. Dealing with the fallout from Endgame, I mean, Peter's in this situation where he's, he's lost his mentor, he's disappeared and then come back five years later. Like, everything is kind of crazy, but 
What I think is so endearing is that despite all that, the thing that he's focused on at the very beginning of the movie is going on this class trip and telling MJ how he feels. So there's something kind of sweet about that. It is a really fun development process as someone who knew all the things that were gonna happen in Infinity War and in Endgame to be writing the movie concurrently as those are being shot and edited. So, you know, they were doing all these crazy things and then I, it was my job to figure out a way to explain them and see how they were gonna affect, affect my world. There's kind of two types of Spider-Man villains in the comics. There's uh, characters that he has a personal relationship with that makes fighting him, fighting them difficult. And then there are characters who just challenge him physically in a way um, that make things difficult for him. And when he's fighting these things that are essentially natural disasters, you know, it, it's, you can't do much with webs when you're fighting water and when you're fighting fire. It's, uh, it was just a good challenge, I felt, for him. Jake's great. I mean, he brings so much to the role, and he's so smart, and he can do anything. So, uh, yeah, it was like an absolute joy cracking this character together. To be able to just draw from this extremely rich library of films and just pick your favorite characters and put them all together and see what happens, you know, you just feel like, um, you know, it's like a fan's dream come to life.